Alrighty guys, today we will be tramming my mini mill and in order to do so, we will be fabricating a spindle square. Before we jump right into this build, I would like to provide the basics of what we are trying to achieve when tramming this mini mill. A perfect 9 degree angle between the column and the table will give us a mill that is perfectly in tram or trammed. A degree that is less than 90 or greater than 90 will be out of tram and your workpiece will suffer. The mini mills of this design are known for not being terribly rigid, so I wanted a tool that I can use periodically to make sure that my mill is in tram. To make this piece, I will be using a block of aluminum, and the first step will be squaring up this block of aluminum so that all sides are parallel and square to each other. I'd like to note here that I got this design from the channel Build Something Cool. He has a three-part series on building a spindle square, and I would highly advise you checking out that channel if you will be building one of these spindle squares. I will also be putting a link to the PDF plans for this specific spindle square in the description below. As you just saw, I used a fly cutter to flatten one side of this bar. I then take that flattened side and put it up against my back jaw on the vise. This back jaw is the stationary jaw of the vise and it will be our reference point for squaring up this piece. Once we have the second surface machined, the two machine surfaces will be at 90 degrees from each other. These two surfaces will then contact the back jaw and the parallels in our next step. Between steps, make sure to knock the burr off so that this burr does not interfere with your clamping. With two machine surfaces at 90 degrees from each other, we will put one against the back jaw and one against the parallels. This ensures that surface number three will be at a 90 degree angle to surface number two and parallel to surface number one. Once you're at this stage in the game, you'll note that the parallels are staying very tight when you clamp the workpiece because all three of the surfaces that are contacting the vise are perfectly squared to each other and parallel. After we got all four sides squared up to each other, I took a little bit of time to square up the ends and then took this guy over to the belt sander to round off all the corners and knock off any burrs that were accumulating during the machining process. I want to point out here that I am not a machinist, but the accuracy achieved with this block is more than adequate for the project that we are tackling today. The next step will be to drill some holes in this block. Two holes to accept the dial indicators and one center hole to accept an arbor that will be going into the mill. I will venture to note here that a more accurate way to locate these holes would be to use an edge finder and the dials on your mill. However, I do not feel like this piece merits that level of precision. The two holes for the dial indicators will be 3 8 of an inch, and the center hole will be 1 half of an inch to accept the arbor that we will machine later. Once I drilled my first hole, I locked the Y axis so that all three holes will be in line with each other. For drilling these holes, I used a small pilot, in this case an eighth of an inch pilot hole, and then a very slow speed on my mill with the larger 3 8 and half of an inch drill bits. I'm also going to be drilling the set screw holes on both sides about a quarter of an inch in from the ends of this bar. The first hole I drill is a number 7 hole that will be tapped and then I drill halfway through the block with a quarter inch drill bit so that I have clearance to get the tap through. I then drive the tap into the number seven hole gently by hand with the mill to get it started and then finish out the tapping by hand with the tapping tool. Lastly, I drill a hole slightly larger than the cap head screws that I will be using so that the screws will recess into the spindle square. For this project, I will be using an inch and a quarter long stainless steel cap head screws that are threaded at quarter 20. So I'll go ahead and recap the drilling process for the set screw holes. The first thing I'll do is drill all the way through the piece with a number seven drill bit. I will then drill halfway through the piece through the same hole with a quarter inch bit. This will allow room to tap through that hole and also allow room for the future set screw. I'll then drill a hole approximately a quarter inch into the workpiece that is around three eighths of an inch in diameter so that the cap head screw has a recess to sit in too. After that, we will tap the bottom part of the hole, which is a number seven drill bit size, to quarter 20. 
Once we are done with our drilling, we will cut some slots in the bar here so that when we tighten up our set screw, the aluminum will flex and tighten around the dial indicators. I would like to note here that I came back and extended the length of these slots after the project was complete so that I had an easier time tightening up those set screws and clamping down on the dial indicators. The next step of the process will be to machine the arbor. Now, this is the first time I am using this lathe for a project. I recently restored this lathe. It's a 12 inch 1937 Atlas Craftsman lathe. So I'm really excited to get to use it for the first time here. As you just saw, I chucked up a piece of three quarters of an inch bar into the lathe, and then I started taking it down to one half of an inch. I used a stop on the ways here so that I knew about how far to come into the piece. And then I used a power feed on the lathe at about four and a half thousandths per revolution to machine towards uh, the right side of the lathe here. This is the end of the work that will be inserted into the aluminum. So you wanna make sure that it ends up being around one thousandth larger than the diameter of the hole in the piece of aluminum. I then make a few passes on the center of the bar so that it's in line with the nub that we just machined and then cut off the total length of this bar to around four and a half inches. Once we have it cut off, I clean up the end and then we drill a center hole in that end so that I can support it with a tailstock and then machine this down to around one half of an inch so that I can fit into a half inch collet on my mini mill. So after this piece is completed, I will be attempting my first interference fit. So the OD of that half inch nub is around one thousandth of an inch larger than the ID of the half inch hole in the piece of aluminum. In order to get them to fit, I will cool this arbor and I will heat the piece of aluminum and hopefully that will shrink one and expand the other enough to have these two pieces fit together. I found that my measurement of the ID of the hole was a little off so I had to use a little bit of hammer pressure to get the two to fit together. So here is the final product with both dial indicators inserted. Note that it took a significant amount of force for me to tighten up those dial indicators and that is why I came back later to extend those slots. So we will be using this tool to tram my vise. However, you can do the same thing on the table of the mill. First thing I do is I load the dial indicators. So I come down about one or two turns and then use the fine tuning adjustment on my Z axis to dial in the left indicator to zero. I then turn the entire assembly so that the right indicator is now on the exact same spot of the parallel that the, the left indicator was on, get it dialed in at zero as well. This is how you calibrate the spindle square. Once we are calibrated, we can see how in tram my mill already was. And happily, I was already pretty much in tram here with about a half of a thousandth difference between the two dial indicators. However, for the sake of YouTube, I will take my trammed mill and knock it out of tram so that we can retram it for the video. So I loosened the nut on the back of the column and then snugged it back just a little bit gave a few hammer blows to the top of the column and you can see that I am now out of tram by about 10 thousandths of an inch. My process for getting the mill back in tram is pretty simple. I will look at both indicators and see what direction I need to move the column and then give very light taps with a soft blow hammer in that direction until the two indicators line back up with each other. I'm also tightening the back nut throughout the process because the tightening or loosening of that nut can have an effect on the tram of your mini mill. And in very short order with this spindle square, I was able to get this mill back in tram with the vise. So I was very happy with how this piece turned out and how easy it was to use. I will be using it in the future for sure to check the tram and also to bring my mill back into tram if it ever gets knocked out. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.